Alrighty, how's it going everybody? It's me, Silver Supreme, and welcome to something new on the channel. This was recommended to me by a viewer long ago and far away <laughs> that I should try this out. The King of Dragon Pass. Now, from what I've looked at this game before buying it, it was like on the cheap cheap. This is kind of like a... I don't know, like a choose your own um, path type of story adventure. And you know, I kind of want to give it a shot. Like the menu is bare bones in the game, but like looking at this art style with like Native American esque woman fighting this, uh, I don't know, paladin knight and a freaking dragon in the background. This actually kind of looks like <laughs> one of those, uh, one of those pulp fantasy slash sci-fi uh, covers I've seen in the past. Especially those. If you see any of those, you are definitely in for a treat. If you see any one of those that's been illustrated by an Italian or for someone from South America, because the artwork on those like cool ass sci-fi covers from like the 60s and 50s and 70s back then, anyone who's Italian or from South America who did those, you're in for a treat because they look awesome. Speaking of awesome, let's play. All right, so I haven't really, I've never touched this. I only did was like load up the game just to see um how and what is going to respond but we're going to have to figure this out so this little tutorial click it again to grow um you're in charge of a clan which just immigrated to dragon pass we begin with choosing your clan's backstory once you read the text click continue okay all right so looks like i'm gonna be reading a lot oh god do i have any liquids next to me a little bit okay i should hopefully survive <clears throat> There was once a time when gods and people walked the earth together. Your clan traces its ancestry back to those times. Your clan history begins when you join the forces of the storm god Orlanth. Back then, Orlanth was simply one of many upstart rebellious gods bent upon conquest of the world. Orlanth's unique contributions at that time were personal honor and a close kinship to the other deities who seemed to be on the winning side. Let's see. There are no right or wrong answers. Choices bold the mythological profile of your clan. For now, click the whoop with Orland choice. Okay. So let's see. After many tribulations, adventures, and discoveries, Orland proved himself worthy of marrying Arnalda, the Earth Mother. The two formed the marriage ring and created a great harmony in the world through this sacred bond. Your clan took part in the wedding ceremony. Most clans either whooped with Orland or learned a secret from Arnalda. A few clans stood with Elma, god of horses in the sun, as the honor guard. How do you prepare for the great marriage? So we got these choices. Your men and women donned gleaming armor and stood guard with Elma. Well, you know what? Let's just whoop because the tutorial said so. I'm doing that because I'm a pet. <laughs> Each early event starts your clan with knowledge of a different divine blessing. Again, there's no best answer. Okay, so this one is just freebie. All right, so Orland's struggles to remake the world was just beginning and many other gods joined him in it. Um, Orland fought Yelm, the bright emperor, and undertook many wars of conquest. Other more peaceful deeds were just as important. Your earliest famous event was, hmm, the healing of Orland when the merciful goddess uh, Chalana Arroy joined the Orland's tribe, the hundred day hunt when Orland and his son Odala uh, tracked the sky bear, jested settlement when, where Orland and Isaris, the talking god, outwitted foreign deities in a difficult negotiation, possession of the animals where Hirolda, the cow mother, led the sacred hearse to Orland's stead, when Barntar, son of Orland and uh, Arnalda, learned of harnessing ox and the plow, when uh, Lankor Me, the knowing God learned how to use the marking bone, which could mark the signs of power upon anything. And Pella, the pottery goddess, made oh Jesus, there's so many. Um, you know, instead of reading all of these, I just I'll, I'll take a little saunter and pick. Um, let's see. Well, um, I say, well, let's just do the hundred day hunt. If you decide that your ancestors took the Nalda Ben as thralls, they see nothing wrong with the practice. Otherwise, they dislike the institution of slavery. All right. What the hell that was? Uh, 
Ornland succeeded in remaking the world, thus began the golden era called the Storm Age. Ornland's son, Vingot, was a famous warlord during this time. Most people in the area were his followers. He introduced new principles such as the rule of hospitality, which said that after you invited people into your steads, you could not attack or harm them. Thus was much treachery banished from Orlanthi's society. Many who would not have survived agreed to his new ways in order to gain his protection. He was a great organizer and helped the many scattered people form into new clans and tribes. Your clan was one of those aided by King Vingot. After you proved yourselves robust and capable of survival, Vinkot placed a remnant people under your protection. They were the Nalda Ben, or stick farmers. You had a choice whether to make them into thralls or adopt them as members of your clan. Uh, oh, well, let's see. We could be dicks and make them slaves, but we already got, like, let's say, uh, we already have, like, the rule of hospitality. They wrote adopt them as family hell is that? Your ancestors expect you to retain an enmity to their ancient enemies who are still around to bedevil you. The foes of the Vingotlings were many and your people fought hard against them. Which one did, in particular did you fight? Bostakong, the troll lord, Ukar Gra, king of the Besmoli beastmen, Shinkis Moore, the elf warlord, <laughs> Tata, the green champion of the flat clan called Prax, Best Vena, Warlord of the Ice Shot. So let's see. I kind of like you. Know? <laughs> All right, you know what? We're gonna say I I do like Buster Kang. Buster Kang is definitely a boss ass name. But Chink is more. I kind of am annoyed with elves right now. Um. <laughs> All right, you know what? Hang on. I've been I've been asking. Let's see. Heads Buster Kang will rival up. Tails Chink is more. The uh, of warlord. So let me see. Hey Siri, flip a coin. Oh wait, you guys can't hear it, but it says it's tails. All right, so hey, we're gonna. <laughs> I forgot I had my phone on silent, but it, it says tails. Trust me. So chink is more. We're gonna slaughter the elves. The Storm Age ended in disaster when the gods and creatures of chaos came and destroyed nearly everything. Orlanth and his allies fought hard, but chaos almost always won. Many gods died and new ones rose to prominence. Many people died too. Catastrophe shook the world. The sunfall, the rain of blood, the terrible laughing tsunami. The darkness got so bad that even Orlanth and his companions had to abandon humans to their own destinies. Only a few deities, either small ones or weak ones, remained. The world stagnated and died. Your clan was diminished to a ragged handful of hardy survivors. Oh, this is... <laughs> yeah, the world's in there. Good lord. Let's see. War clans can devote more clan magic towards war, and more of the farmers can muster the fight. Peace clans can devote more clan magic towards crops and herds. Balanced clans are in the middle. Okay. So, Heort, or Hort, the king, was the leader who man uh, who emerged amid the turmoil of the darkness. The efforts of Hort and his companions helped set the world in order again. He created the laws that we follow to this day. One of the great distinctions which Hort discerned among his clans was that some of them tended towards either peace or war, while others maintained a balanced principle or balance between these two principles. Hmm. Which kind was of your clan? War, balance, and peace. War, balance, and peace. War, balance, and peace. I think it is war. <laughs> Let's see. You'll begin with a shrine to the deity you first awaken or continue to worship. As always, different choices change the game slightly, but none is the best. Okay. Finally, the sun rose again. While the rest of society worked to protect themselves, find food, or otherwise just survive, the first priests worked to reestablish links with the ancient deities. With a new harmony between people and deities, the world was slowly improved. Once the awakening process had begun, it got easier and went quicker as the gods woke each other too. Who was the first deity which your clan helped awaken? So I guess a uh, none. Our ancestors are good enough. Oh, that's a gangster. Let me say no. Our ancestors are good. But uh, Odela the hunter, Orlanth the father. Hmm. Hmm, so there's, there's really, like, we can't choose any of these. Alright. 
or we can abandon our gods since they abandoned us. I have no idea. I'm scared. <laughs> you know what? Since the gods abandoned us, it's like, let's see this. The game is free choice. It says no choice is the best. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. And since the gods abandoned us, we're going to worship our ancestors because fuck them. They left us when Archeon came about and brought about the end times and no one helped at all. No. Let's see. Things have been different since the dawn, 1300 years ago. Orlanth and the other gods retreated from the world. See, they abandoned us again, leaving it to mortals. You can still contact them through ritual and sacrifice or enter their realm by reenacting stories about their deeds, which contain great magic, but they no longer walk beside you. When you settle in a new place, you mark this great change in the world by naming your land, not after a god, but after a mortal like yourselves. You called it uh, Hrotland in honor of the king who taught you how to survive during the darkness. Huh. Kind of like Sigmar. I have no idea why the hell I'm making Warhammer references, and I barely know Warhammer, so consider me an asshole, I suppose. <laughs> Whatever your answers choose, you'll want to treat dragons and their kin the same way. Excuse? Um, <laughs> spare change, my lord. <laughs> Is that a dragon? <laughs> See, I was, you know, was going to say something bad, but... <laughs> About 600 years ago, a dragon approached you in either its own form or that of a human with a dragon soul inside it. The dragons had always been hostile, or at the very best, uh, utterly uncaring. Orland was always the dragon slayer. You had to choose whether to believe it and cooperate and learn to do what the dragons know, or whether to maintain neutrality. What was your attitude towards the dragons? You know what? Since Orland and the gods pissed away, I would say we should learn from the dragons because Orlance was all like committing genocide against them apparently and since he was a dick to humanity maybe the dragons know a secret like he says trust me I could tell you how to forge the one ring to rule them all <laughs> oh we will learn about the dragons Ooh, what's this? most of the people who said yes to the dragons moved to dragon pass a land to the north of your home you stayed in Rotland. it is a good thing too for a little over 200 years ago, the dragons rose up and ate everyone who lived in Dragon's Pass. They ate the Orlanthi along with all the other foolish human dragon friends. Oh, oh God. For a long time, no humans went to Dragon Pass. They were sure that the dragons would eat them too. Oh, well, uh. <laughs> well, this is saying this is in the past. This is a little over 200 years ago. And, you know, maybe the dragons were pissed that Orland was, like, going around killing them. But I can see that. All right. Recent events made you think twice about the abandoned land of Dragon Pass. A generation ago, a usurper who called himself the Pharaoh came to Hrotland and started a civil war. The clan broke into disputes, sometimes violent, about whether to support the Pharaoh. In the end, your group of dissidents decided it would be better to risk the dangers of Dragon's Pass than to stay and kill your own kin. The greatest sin an Orlanthi can commit. Those unable to live under the Pharaoh would move northward to Dragon Pass. People of similar beliefs from other clans had already made the same decision and settled there. So you made a new clan, just as your ancestors had done in the days of King Hrot. Larger borders are harder to guard. Enemies will find it easier to lose your Okay. Your new clan made the dangerous trek to Dragon Pass and selected a place to live. Like the other Orlanthi refugees from Hrotland, you settled in uh, Quivenland. Uh, oh, Quaveni land, a mountainous area in the southeast of Dragon Pass. You will call these lands your home, or Tula. Tradition requires you to make a former land claim. As much as we need, more than we need to grow. Huge tracks, far more than needed. Lots more than we needed. Hmm. I would say more than we need, uh, so we could grow into it. Just in case, so we're not like tight end, but we got a little bit of space. This, let's use that one. Stick with normal difficulty and a short length for your first game. Restart lets you start over. Oh, wow. This is actually the beginning. Oh, oh my God. I didn't, <laughs> didn't expect this. Click play to begin your story of Dragon Player. Okay. Uh, and Magarn. Normal, short, short. Forge is trying to rank king for 10 years. We'll, we'll keep it short because this is my first time playing. I kind of want to see where it goes. So um, we can change the clan name. We're going to call it... Um, you know, I this is a name for like a character I've always made for like the past several years in RPGs and whatnot. They I always have one character named Rikor, so we are gonna be called the Rikorians. Okay. Yeah. So 
the Lissy. Your clan history to prepare for the marriage of Alanda and Orlanth. Your men uh, whooped and drank with Orlanth. Your clan's earliest famous event was the Hundred Day Hunt. You added strangers to your clan as an adopted family. Your ancient enemy is Chinkis Moore, the elf warlord. Yours was a war clan. You first awakened your ancestors. Your attitude towards dragons was positive. You shared their knowledge. You have more than you need to grow into. All right, let's play. Wow, 15 minutes of intro. What the hell is this? Sacred time is two weeks of magical ceremonies which precede each new year. Here you allocate your, the clan's magic resources for the coming year. Members of your clan council or ring offer advice. Click another advisor for their advice or the text to hide it. Hmm. Click the boxes to allocate a point of clan magic to crops, herds, uh, and war. Then click proceed. This leaves a reserve in case you need it later. Okay. What? Okay. Let's see, forecast. Our god talkers. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, our god talkers um, predict a more or less normal harvest. The uh, Elink spirits have chased off the vermin spirits, and there should be few rats this year. Our current class last year. Uh, we made the dangerous trek to Dragon's Pass and claimed more land than we needed to grow into. We built a clan hall, some stairs, and a shrine to Orlanth, but when we left Hrotland, we lost much of the con our connection with the gods. Other clans we knew back in Hrotland also sent immigrants to Dragon Pass, so we already have friends and enemies in the new land. It's now time for the annual an allocation of our magic. So, Lycan, spend what we can on mystery so we can sacrifice um, to understand and perform our land's blessings. Okay. Hold brass. Devote three to diplomacy. Then we should do rituals for war, trade, and mysteries. Leave something so we can deal with any crises that comes up. Huh. Oh, okay. I've seen this guy somewhere. I don't know where. I, I've seen this picture somewhere. I don't know. I, I don't know if it was a meme or something, but I remember seeing this guy's way. Bastico. <laughs> Oh god. Keep at least one point of magic in reserve in case we need it for something unexpected, okay? Ask everyone. Spend all we can on mysteries. Then we can sacrifice um for understandings of the important blessings. It's easier keeping people healthy than trying to cure them. I think we should allocate two to health magic. Um, and conserve a few points in case we need to call Chalana Arroy during the year. Okay. Manara. Allow one crop to, uh, crop magic. Our herds are also important. So earmark one for them. We use some magic in case we need to call on the earth goddess. This hmm. By the way, with an Aralda worshiper on the ring, we could perform more livestock rituals. Allocate three to war magic and be sure to leave a few points in reserve in case we're raided. Okay. Oh, okay. So I, I do want to put in so forth. So we got seven in reserve. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So I can. Okay. I do. Okay. So they say it's a more or less like um, normal harvest. So I don't think I should put that much in there. Um. Let's see, we got good food. It looks like we're doing okay. Weapon things, 12, population, magic. Hmm. Then we should do rituals for war. Mysteries, leave something so we can cover. Spend what we can on mysteries so we can sacrifice to understand. Hmm. Like, I get it, like a lot of people want me to put some in mysteries. Here, how about this? I'll put this. And I'll keep two in reserve. Yeah, I'll keep two in reserve. We'll actually put, actually, you know what? Hmm. All right, so we're gonna have, uh, this is gonna be weird. I'm gonna keep wet in reserve. 
Well, three in war, two in diplomacy, and one on mysteries. Let's let's see how this goes. All right, let's check on the neighbors in our uh, menu at the left. Click relations. Okay, relations with the other clans of Dragon Pass are important for winning. It's generally better to be old favorites, but we'll ask someone for cattle. Slide the control at the top until favors do is in the center. Okay. Let me get my take a swig. Here we go. Gotta go to favorites do. Okay. Click Gorin in the clan list. Right? They're known for a large boulder with war powers. The chief is Intergarn. They owe us a favor. Click the info balloon if you want to hide it. Um, click the emissary button to send an emissary. Alright. We'll do that. Alright, the dialogue choose Cold Brass as our best diplomat. Uh Let's see. Press the small picture of his face. All right. Sure enough, he has an excellent bargaining skill as well as good leadership. Leave him chosen and click ask for cattle as a goal. Okay, so that's the goal. Sending him to Goran. Okay, sending. So we're sending him here. The goal is to ask for cattle. There's like other stuff in here too. Okay. All right. The Goran clan will be more likely to respond favorably if we give them a few gifts. Adjust the good slicer to bring 10 cows worth of goods. Okay. Suppose this. Wait, that kind of that's ass and I. If we like bring ten cows and like send ten cow, right? Oh wait, my, I'm stupid. It says the goods. All right, and click the plus a few times to bring eight footmen to help guard our gifts. Okay. So okay, so we're asking. I'm gonna read it. So we're sending them there with the goal to ask for cows. We then bring 10 things of goods in exchange for 10 cows. And uh, these are like our security. So we got eight footmen and click send to send out the mission. Okay. What the hell is happening? Donkeys, mules, people. Sora Goodseller, a trade priestess of the talking god Aceres, comes to trade. In addition to the usual exchange of goods, she asks if we have any white horses. Although we have some light gray horses, none could truly be called white. Um, while the mission is on its way, events require your attention. The ring will advise you when you click someone. The recommended actions highlight in blue. Colbrass can't give advice. Click his picture to see why. Pick any response. They're selling wrong choice, so... Yeah, he's away because he's on a mission. See, we should at least show generosities so she will spread our good name among the other clans. We could paint a horse white. I've done it before. This is the reason why he's bastard coast. <laughs> uh, hold on, Rod. Although we can't fulfill our guest request, nothing says we have to honor unreasonable requests. We have failed in our obligation to a guest. A horse is usually worth four cows, but white horses are fairly rare. He really wants a horse. Oh, okay. So, yeah. All okay, right. So I see. Well, all the blue highlights is just what people recommend. Okay. So he wants to say apologize for not having one. All right. I guess. Um. Here we can throw. Let's say apologize for not having one for her feast. 
minus five cows plus food. Sora said that the lack of white horse reflected poorly on neither our generosity nor our hospitality, and the feast was proof of both. Hmm. You bitch. Okay. <laughs> cool brass arrives at the Gorin clan. Um, only Corbrass can give advice because he's the only one there. Um, choose a customary response of 20 cows. You'll see that you've gained cattle. Their chief, Intagarn, is well known for his generosity. They like us, and so we can try asking for more than customary amount. Your emissary, Corbrass, approaches the Gorans, asking them to make good on a favor they owe you. Corbrass seeks to get the cows from them. The customary number of cows granted by obligation is 20. How many heads of cattle do you ask for? Right, so then we just use one. Gave us a cattle without complaint. All right, clans get their most powerful magic by worshiping uh, Glorantha's many gods. Click magic in the menu. All right, so let's see what this. In the list of deities, choose uh, Humak, the god of war. Hmm, it's kind of. <laughs> We got a little cross right here. <laughs> the right side shows magical benefits, which a uh, temple to Humak can provide. So let's see, battle luck, improves our chance of winning a battle, skills bonds between clans, improves the ability of our warriors in battle, weapon names fight with the strength of two. Ooh. Click build. God of war and death in of all endings. He is the patron of the uh, severest of warriors. Okay. Here, we'll build it. When you build, the battle luck blessing will be chosen automatically, though you could change it. Click build to build a shrine to human. Should at least have a shrine to the god of combat. It's going to enhance the effectiveness of our warriors. Not the god, is the god of death. That's not something we want to encourage more of. <laughs> Worshiping Humak will make our warriors stronger. Okay, seeing that we're currently devoting eight cows and sixteen goods um, to the guys each year. Maybe we should build a shrine. A warrior needs a sword. Our clan needs a temple to. Okay. So we build this like this is the shrine I'm guessing, and then each one is just an upgraded version. So this one gives us one blessing, cost 10, annual maintenance is four goods and two cows. Okay. All right. In the list of deities, choose Humag, the god of war. Oh yeah, we already did that. Hmm. Yeah, we got the battle up. Um, The game, yeah, we did that. So I guess I could uh, enlarge your shrine to get another permanent blessing, or uncheck the current one to pick a different one, or sacrifice for a blessing. So yeah, we did the uh, thing. We already built the. Uh... Oh, so what's this to build a temple? Uh, what the hell? Another crisis. Choices here impact dealings with two other clans and a mood of your own. Ignore your advisors and assist the coral barrier. What? 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 What is happening? <laughs> All right, everyone is gossiping about what happened a few hours ago. The young woman, uh, Eno Slara, was found out in the forest making love with Coral, a notorious poet and troublemaking warrior of the Heron clan. Coral left without a formal farewell. Ian Solara is unmarried, so her actions are not an offense against the gods, but she is betrothed to the Jorator, a young thane of the Boscovi clan, and the wedding is scheduled for the next season. So, hmm. in a mood of your own, ignore your advice and insist that Coral marry her. It's on the cusp of a feud with us. A marriage is like any other trade. You must tell your trading partner the facts so he will not complain later. 
Cole's poetry is fine indeed. More snakes live in the mountains than any old fool thinks. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> has, um, Eno Slara has done nothing wrong, nor has the otherwise disreputable Cole. It would be absurd, um, to marry her to him. Cole will cause trouble for Gerator if we allow the marriage. This is juicy gossip, but we need to plant our feelings more than anything else right now. Let's just hope Cole's an impregnator. <laughs> okay, uh... Well, I'm just following the tutorial. Ignore like, your risers and insist Cole will marry her. Alright. The matter is not yet resolved. Before raiding Cole's clan, the Harani find out more about them by clicking them in the clan list below. Okay. Oh, wait, it's Ask. It's telling me that. Okay. Um, sis, they call and marry her. You mistake my intentions, Cora said. I meant not to eat the whole cake, but merely to sample the dough. When our people heard this, they were outraged. Good lord. Alright, so we gotta find the clans. What's this? The Harani clan. Uh, is this an alphabetical order? I guess is this one Haran? At least you're not allied with the Harani. Choose to launch a retaliatory raid. They're known for their aggressive pursuit of trade. Their chief is Hind. Okay. I guess we can raid them for their insult, even though it is uh, sea season. Interesting. Okay. We'll raid them. <laughs> okay. Now I think we're escalating some murder after like petty farm disputes. <laughs> Now decide who goes on a raid. Footmen, mostly farmers who are quite capable of fighting, weapon things, full-time warriors, and women auxiliaries who heal and encourage. Then click proceed. Alright. Raid the Heron clan in retaliation for their insult, even though it is sea season. Alright, so we're gonna send in uh Uh, I guess we could send in about 115. We'll send in 10 weapon things and then I guess 12 auxiliaries. This is probably overkill, but who cares? Alliances, favors due. All right. Let's see. We elude the Haran patrols and our 10 weapon things and 115 footmen are facing over only seven weapon things and 72 spearmen. Well, we outnumbered them. The two forces are about to close. Improve your odds by clicking the plus to allocate one point of magic. By not making sacrifices before battle, you can charge the enemy before they're ready. Uh, click proceed to begin the fight. Okay. So we got objectives, I see. We can plunder, burn the stairs, kill as many as possible. <laughs> Take captives or survive. I think we'll plunder. Like this is plunder. So we got tactics. Maneuver. Hmm. I would say we could charge them. Yeah, I, I guess we could charge them. Alright. Oh god. Let's see. We rushed the heron formation while they were still performing their rituals. Fierce fighting ensued. Our mighty, our magic smote them mightily. We drove the Harani from the battlefield and were able to plunder the Tula. We captured 18 cows, six horses. We took 26 cows worth of loot. Our auxiliaries were able to patch up two of our warriors. So we only lost one man. We got six wounded. We killed two of their weapon things. Five of their weapon things are wounded. Okay, and we killed 13 of their footmen. And they get uh, 22 wounded. Okay. Raid the Haran clan in retaliation for the insult, even though it was sea season. <laughs> sea season. <laughs> we celebrated the humbling of lecherous Coral's clan. Once the excitement died down, the Corals began to worry about how little they, uh, how little grain they planted. Okay. It says done. <laughs> Even if no weapon things were killed or injured, it can hurt. It can't hurt to strengthen your fighting forces. Switch to the war screen to hire more warriors. Okay. All right. Click the weapon things button to recruit more fighters. Choose the maximum number of weapon things by using the slider or clicking the plus, then click recruit. You may not 
always be able to hire as many as you want. They require a horse, twice as much food as farmer, annual gifts worth one cow. Okay, he says, we, you, I, have, I have nothing to add. My father was a weapon saying, feel that muscle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, weapon things are being treated in the farmers. Well, we are a warrior clan, you dumb winches. All right, so I'll get us. Um, here we'll do fifteen. And offer additional. Okay, uh, you may not always be able to hire as many as you want. Oh, it says choose a maximum number. Okay, so here. We promoted four farmers to weapon things. Oh, okay. So we can recruit a farmer to off from outside the clan or offer additional gifts. Switch to the lore screen, which provides information about the world or Glorantha. You don't need to know all this right now, but to win the game, be familiar with the myths. Sacrifice to the appropriate deity to learn their details. These will help when you reenact the myth as a hero quest. A hero quest duplicates the feats of the gods to gain magical benefits. Click sword story. Okay. Bloody hell. The sword story. A pathetic fellow called uh, Uramal finds a new weapon called death and uses it to slay grandfather mortal. He shows it to Orland's brother, Humak, takes it from him despite Humax attempts to control it use of the weapon spreads and soon killing becomes commonplace uh, I most of the dragon pass is still unknown since your clan just arrived you have a basic idea of the geography from uh, when people lived here before switch to the map screen to see what you know about your new home okay you can always scroll or zoom the map the usual ways. Click explore the outfit and exploration party and learn more about Dragon's Path. Okay. The exploration cross is set to the north of your clan. Leave it there or click where you wish to explore. Ah, so I can just like move this about. Okay, we'll just leave it right there. And I guess this is how fast they go. Alright, we'll keep it basic. We're being raided by the horse nomads. There are 153 of them, all mounted. Luckily, our patrol spotted them, and all 15 weapon things met them, as well as 152 of the fairy. Plan is under attack. Use a point of magic and sacrifice a cow to Humax for his favor. Click proceed to get the fire underway. Okay. Sacrifice to you, Mac. Right. So we can drive them off, kill them. Probably. Let's just drive them off because they look like they are our business. We outmaneuvered the horse nomads and gained a superior position. As our forces engage with the horse nomads, Lycan notices that a detachment of riders is trying to sneak completely around and get us from behind. What should he do? Sometimes a battle has a pivotal moment. When a leader has the chance to act heroically, this is one of those signs. Make a decision, then proceed to the main battle. Hmm, we can ignore them. Make sure Varsens know uh, about the threat. Try to drive them off. Hmm. Here, try to drive them off. Let's see. Does he charge immediately with whoever is nearby? Gather an equal force before charging. Gather a larger force before charging. Um. Here, let's just charge immediately. The horse nomad leader pulled out a flaming arrow and shot Lycan in the stomach. After a brief engagement, the horse nomads galloped away towards our settlement, magic gleaming from the hooves of their steeds. The riders broke into a stead and took 10 women and children and old folk captive. My god. 
this was a bloody battle. We drove the horse nomads off, and their survivors left without plundering Artula. We captured 39 horses. Our auxiliaries were able to patch up one of our warriors. They, we didn't take any casualties, but they did a lot. <laughs> Chances are you have some wounded fighters to attend to. One quick way to heal people is to call on the healing goddess, Chalana Aroy. So switch to the magic screen. Okay. Um, and we can sacrifice her. Yeah, it looks like our boy, he got like shot. Yeah, he's wounded. All right, click the healing button to select that blessing if you have no wounded. Just click X to leave the dialogue. Otherwise, choose at least 15 goods for entreating the goddess and click sacrifice. All right, we do got All right. In her mercy, Chalon Roy healed all of our wounded. Yay, he's back. Sometimes you'll just want time to pass by. At the upper left, note that it's now earth season. When the clan takes in the harvest, you wouldn't want to call up the farmers for a raid. Instead, click the season wheel to advance to the next season. Okay. All right, what is happening now? Goodness, so much is happening. Poe's clan dislikes us more than Jorah's clan. Uh, Ian Slara, whose betrothal to Jorotor, uh, the Boscovi, was broken off after her seduction by Coral, the poet of the Harani, is now pregnant. Ian Slara is very happy, but her kinsfolk see her pregnancy as a reminder of an embarrassing chain of events. An earlier decision has a delayed effect. See what your advisors have to say. Sometimes matters brought before the clan ring are not truly issues for the ring to settle. So choose leave this matter for her kinsfolk, right? The King Osco was born outside the marriage bond. What's Baskus gonna say? Insulara's kin are being unreasonable. They need a good talking to. Has broken neither law nor custom. This is a private matter and remains so. Why are we bothering with this trifle when it's harvest time? It's harvesting season! Maybe <laughs> easier to force Jorto to marry her and then to force Carol. Yeah, leave, uh, we'll just leave it to her family. People were happy that the ring did not interfere. Yeah, because this seems like it's already asinine. We already, uh, you know, did the raid. <laughs> so, the expedition has returned with another opportunity. Decide how to handle it. Your clan ring can advise you. The newly explored territory will be shown next the uh, next time you look at the map. Your explorers encounter a woman from Hrotland while mapping the north. Her name is Nalinda. Oh, Nalindia. And she is fleeing from her homeland. I saw an agent of the Pharaoh who sought to tell chosen Orlanthi chieftains how to interpret the laws of our people. Although my act was just and supported by the spirits of our ancestors, the leaders were too afraid of the Pharaoh to stand up for what is right. They outlawed me and sent pursuers to kill me. I think I have outdistanced my pursuers, but we'll be lying if I said I was sure of that. The explorers were moved by her words and brought her here, suggesting they should give her asylum. We have proven ourselves to the people who love and trust us. We can afford to decide on uh, the way we want to decide. People admire her. After the Pharaoh displaced the rightful rule of our land, he said we would be allowed to live in peace, but his officials were unrighteous, drove us to settle this rough land. Give her 10 cows worth of easily portable trade goods. The Pharaoh will send evil sorcerers who will kill half the ring. Do we really need another weapon thing? Yes! By all means, adopt her and honor her as a great foe of the Pharaoh. Yes, I shall adopt her. In the chief household, yep. The people were proud to see a foe of the Pharaoh honored in such a fashion. It's dark season, and Minara reports the final tally of the harvest. It's worth paying attention to the agricultural calendar, even if this tutorial didn't. <laughs> Click the egg. Our crops did very well this year. However, because we raided during sea season, we were shorthanded and couldn't fully reap Arnaldo's bounty. The game keeps track on what's been going on. Switch to the saga screen, which shows your clan's history. All right. 
Later, you may decide to restore a game by using the restore button. Click the season wheel so more time can pass. Okay. Yeah, this is just talking about all the crazy sagas that's been going on this year. Okay. People love baskets, but they're not one of you. What is happening? Ophir, a thane of the Heron clan, comes to complain that he was insulted by a member of your clan ring. Bastikos dined at the whole clan hall and spent the entire night insulting me. He waved his bare buttocks in my face, touched my wife in an improper manner, and spit chewed food in my face. Because he is a member of your ring, my clan considers any insult made by him to be an insult made by your entire clan. Unless you punish him, there should be a war between our clans. Okay, now Bastikos is... Uh, <laughs> okay. Bastikos seems like he's a boss. If he did all that, he didn't care. I actually respect him. People of Bastikos do not want a few. Ophir is very bullheaded. He would be hard to convince of anything. Of course I was right to ridicule. <laughs> I can convince Ophir that a Trixie's insult should not be taken as seriously as those delivered by a normal Orlanthi. He was right to insult Ophir, but wrong to fondle Ophir's way. <laughs> your, uh, your most japes often made fights worse. Once, for example, he helped the dwarves kill many elves with the thing called death. He did it for a laugh. Have them duel. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so although the members of your clan ring are in uh, sense your clan pieces, they do have minds of their own. There are sound mythic reasons to have a trickster on the ring, but sometimes practical reasons not to remove Bastikos from the ring. I don't want to remove it because he's gangster. Hmm. Suggest that Ophir duel Bastikos. So I can have Bastikos duel him, remove him on the ring, outlaw him, convince Ophir not to take his insults so seriously. Now, that would have been okay if Bastikos didn't cop a feel if he catch <laughs> Uh, you know what? I don't care. He was right to ridicule you. He, you know what? People love Baskos, but they're not with a few. This is kind of interesting because, like, he, he's like, yeah, they love him, but they don't want a war. He's very bullheaded. He'll, it's hard to convince him of anything. So, it seems that you two. The two women on here want to remove Basicos. This dude wants the duel. This guy wants to remove. Okay, so it's three to remove, four to remove. Basicos was right to ridicule you, or we could have them, or we could just have them duel. Mm -hmm. All right, you know what? Hey, how about this? We'll, we'll, we'll make it easy. You guys have a duel. You duel. Basicos, you kind of like. You know, Fuck it, Basicos was right to ridicule you. <laughs> oh wait, this is a tutorial. It's telling me to remove him. Aww. No, I want Basicos. Lame. All right, fine. We'll have to remove him. Practical reasons not to. Okay, remove him from the ring. Ophir was pleased by her justice, and the people were happy that Basco's insults would no longer seem to come from the entire clan. Alright, the ring now has only six members, so go to the clan screen. But I want Basticos! Damn it! Click reorganize the new clan ring. Okay. The mood is contented, the farmers feel resolved, the weapon scenes feel resolved. You can sort the clan leaders in several ways. Click a leader for their opinion. Note that Basco's can't return to the ring for a while. Find Brenna. She has high bargaining. They click the box to choose her. Click reorganize. All right. Brenna. Brenna. Here we are. All right. And click. Although the real, uh, ring reorganization ceremonies take a while, there are no new events to uh, deal with, so click the season wheel. Okay. Hell. Hell has arisen within the clan. She's the first option to try to smooth things over. Alright, one of your calls, uh, Orkinsor, complains that his wife, Instarid, 
um, dishonor him. It all started when he went to worship at the Elkinval Temple and was assaulted by Frithorf, one of their carls. He challenged Frithorf to a duel, but Instared did not want him to fight. When the appointed day of the duel arrived, she found where the men were fighting and knocked Orkinsor dizzy with a big branch. He cannot complete the duel and has now lost his honor. Vince Orcus of the entry had his best interests at heart. Okay. Tell that to tell that to the goose egg on my head, Orcus protested. That didn't work. Even the most silver tongued chief can't always win over the people. Try something else. Um Yeah, I can scold him. Yeah, he was offended and said that we had dishonored the entire clan, but it did not seem that anyone agreed with him. As for Orkinsol and Frithorf, they eventually clashed again, but neither was skilled enough to do more than win the other. They let the matter drop. Hey, I got an achievement. Complete this tutorial. You've played one full year now. That's it for the tutorial. Learn more from the manual. Keep playing with the consequences of the previous decisions or start a new game for the control screen. Have fun. All right. Well, we, we did uh, quite a bit. And um, it's actually, is this a good place? Can, can I actually save it? Uh, Well, actually, here, I'll, I'll start the next thing and then I'll like wrap this video up. All right, our girl talkers say that omens indicated typical harvest. They were looking forward to drinking this year's milk, which would be creamy and plentiful. All right, let's see here. 39 babies were born. We initiated 21 children as adults. Clan has nine more people, 17 more heads of cattle, and 44 more horses than we did last sacred time. We produced 847 and eight, 786 bushels of food. 24 were lost through the spoilage. Crafters produced 45 cows worth of goods. Our market made a profit of 16 cows worth of goods. Maintaining our shrines and temples took 13 cows and goods worth 26 cows. All right. What should we do? So more mysteries. Of course, diplomacy. What do you guys say, Brenna? We should certainly spend a point or two on trade magic. Yeah, I think we should like focus on a little bit of health. Okay, so I'm going to do is health, diplomacy, two in war, and crops. And then we'll have like the last two um, separate. Or actually, you know, what we, we do we got a spare point? I'll put an extra point in trade. We'll keep the one that's in the spare. Okay, so you know what? I think I'm going to wrap this one up right here. Hopefully, I believe should save. If not, I will be confused. Um, actually, game save. Yeah. Yeah, what about the control screen? Oh, wait. Wait, is that with a Son of a bitch, it is. So we can, like, turn the music off. You're currently playing a short game on normal difficulty. All right, so I think this is a good spot. So let's go to the main menu. Okay, and then it'll come back. Okay, cool. So that, that's a good spot to wrap this one up here, folks. So we're going to leave this off right here, and we're going to continue this adventure sooner rather than later. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more. And since now we're back to this, I guess, like, in the meantime, um, I guess I'll explore some of these other menus and stuff, see what we can do. Um... Like, I do feel like going about uh, exploring more. And then we do got to send out our emissary. Yeah, there's a lot in this. <laughs> but I want to, like, I'm just going to be dicking around, see what happens. And that's the best part. That's the best part of this game. It allows me to dick around. And I don't mind it. I wonder if I could destroy other people because they look like they're annoying. Yeah. But that'll be next time, folks. So hope to see you guys again soon. It's the Solo Supreme. And have a great day, folks. Now this one is pure niceness.